Hi, all. I'm Dan Smakerod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, May 20th, 2021, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today, 21 tips for creating a Matterport 3D tour of an RV showroom uh, with as many as 30 RVs. And uh, here to talk to us about that is Pedro Tashera. Uh, hey, Pedro, good to see you. Hi, Dan. Thank you help, for help. Correct me if I if I mispronounced your name there. No, uh, good enough. Teixeira. It's pretty good. Teixeira. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, Pedro is the founder of Text Media PT, based in Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, I invited him, Pedro on the show today because he had showed me this amazing tour of this very large space that had many challenges in terms of scanning. So I thought I would reach out and ask Pedro to be on our show to, to help us with tips when scanning a very large space, particularly when it has a lot of small spaces within a large space, all those RVs. Uh, Pedro, before we, we jump in to get a, a, a tour of the, uh, the, the Matterport 3D tour of the RV showroom that you did, um, how about telling us a little bit about uh, your company, Text Media PT, maybe, maybe when you got a Matterport camera, why you got a Matterport camera, sure. where you are today? Sure, Dan. Uh, it started uh, in January, February of 2019, uh, so just before the pandemic. And uh, it was an investment that I did. I was looking into it a couple months before. Uh, I thought Matterport uh, 3D uh, scans were amazing. So I went, I, I, I work also in London. So I, I was staying in London at the, at the time. I went to the, uh, their shop and they showed me, they did a demo. And uh, to be honest, I, they sold me a tele almost because as soon as they put the camera working and I saw the potential, uh, it just came from that uh, uh, because I'm staying in the UK. Uh, my family is based in Portugal, so I keep traveling back and forth and I want to do something in Portugal and eventually leave the UK. Uh, so I thought that was a big uh, opportunity for a chance of doing a, a, a work that I also enjoy because I work in television, uh, mainly it's TV that I work. So it was almost uh, a step in the right direction for what I wanted. And uh, when you start presenting the challenges, I like, I'm a solving person. To, uh, if I have a challenge, I have to sort it out. I have to solve it. So the first thing they told me was, you cannot do scans outside with our camera. And I put in my head that, yes, you can. <laughs> but before, before we do that, because I, I know we have some outdoor spaces sure. as part of your showroom, uh, what kind of services are you offering your clients and what kind of clients are you, uh, uh, well, providing I, services to. Sure. Uh, I start with, uh, I suppose almost everyone starts with the residential. Uh, and But because the pandemic time probably wasn't the best here in Portugal, people knew 3D, but they didn't knew it that much. Uh, it's, a, it's an expensive thing for here. Uh, they see it as a upmarket. Uh, that changed a bit with the pandemic. Uh, more doors open, but... Uh, still it's a very tight market. Uh, so I start going in a bit of a different direction. I start going to commercial spaces and trying to do um, schools, museums, um, art galleries, um, anything that was different and I could see the potential of having a 3D tour. Uh, so uh, that's how uh, the RV show actually came up. We start doing uh, car shows. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, near where I live in Portugal, there's a lot of uh, people selling cars. Uh, they have their own stands uh, by the, the road, side road. And uh, I start doing a couple of them. And one day I'm traveling and I saw an RV place that had RVs to sell. And I just turned around and said, well, what the heck? I'm, I'm doing cars. Maybe RVs is between a car and home. So I'm going to try it. And uh, literally that, that's how this, this job came up. Uh, I was lucky enough to find someone with a vision on their side and I could present my vision of what we could do. And because of the pandemic, uh, everything came together and uh, we did this work that we'll be showing you. 
Oh, awesome. Why don't, why don't you uh, share your screen, take us into the tour. And then uh, for those that want to uh, check out text media, text media PT, it's textmediapt.com. You'll find uh, Pedro and his company. And I, I think your, your business is actually a family business with a number of uh, team members. Uh, yeah, um, my <laughs> it's uh, me, my wife, my sister, and my brother-in-law. Uh, we all need to do a bit of extra work uh, for some reason or the other. And, you know, what's the, the worst thing you can do? It's work with family. So we go for it. <laughs> I like challenges. <laughs> Saying that, obviously, I'm joking because it's a pleasure to work with all of them. And it's it makes it easier, to be honest with you, when we go on the road, like we had to do on this, you know, they, they don't have to book us four rooms. They only book two rooms. <laughs> so it makes it less expensive for, for the client also. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, so what, what page are you on that we're about to see the 3D tour? At the moment, that's uh, the client decided to create a, a microsite uh, inside their site. And that's the page that uh, their site throws them straight away. So it was, they call it Caravaning Show, which is RV show. And just stepping back a bit, explain why these appear was the reason was that uh, this uh, particular client he, he did at least two shows uh, per year, uh, like, like a, you know, like you have in Las Vegas and things like that. There is a big caravan uh, RV show and they will show and the, he will have four to five uh, RVs there and he shows. And then after the big show in his own building, uh, he does a show of a week where all his uh, ex-clients and new clients that he just acquired on that big show will go and see all the 30 or 40 uh, uh, RVs that he has for sale or to rent. And because of the pandemic, he, he couldn't do that. Uh, he was forbidden of having a hope, open space, having a, a meeting space. So that's when we came up and he said, look, I want to do a virtual tour so I can show the clients and I want them to have the same experience as they were there. Because every year I have at least two to 5,000 people coming in, into my doors to see the show for a week. And I want to, to give them that. And you come with a solution for me that it seems that's possible. So that's exactly what he did. Uh, he did this tour for two weeks and it was about, uh, it just finished about a month ago. Uh, but as you can see, it's still, it's still available, not the promotions itself, but uh, you can see still see the show. Uh, he has a tutorial here uh, to explain people how the, the Matterport uh, works. So it's in Portuguese, I won't be showing you that. But what he did is he created this page where the tour is inside it. And he, he created a special phone number. Uh, so anyone that would be seeing this tour and need more information, they could call them or even through the messenger, send a message and they would uh, contact them. And then... Uh, he created what we called um, uh, labels. Uh, so the labels we used, he put here straight away for people to know what he mean. Could you, uh, obviously, you let us know? These, so th these are uh, kind of the color tags for for the Matterport tags, the Matterport yeah, matter uh, tags. So we, we change the Matterport tags. We create our own tags, personalized tags uh, that the client wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, the, cl the client had someone working with us on the visual side of it, uh, all the graphics and all the design of this. So this was specifically created for this client. Okay. And so for so for our audience, Matterport service providers, I think you can think of those as Matter tags, and they're color coded. Yeah. So could you just give us a quick translation of what each of those tags are, so that as we walk sure. through, we'll know what so we're looking at. This, this first red one with a little person on it is an introduction video uh, that we have mostly in all, in all the fronts of the car, uh, of the RVs, and we'll introduce the RVs, uh, the, the specific model of it. Uh, then we have a presentation below where it says the play button. There, it's some of them have a presentation video uh, from the RV maker, so where they, you know, tell you about their brand and what they have available on those brands. Uh, then with the price tag, as you can guess, it's the price of that specific RV. And then they've created this one, which is a technical. Um, it's a technical sheet, 
that will tell you all the information, the size, how many beds, how many people can sleep in it. So all the information that uh, people need to know uh, will be here. Uh, this one you'll see inside of the RVs, the green one with the three dots, and that is um, something they've created for people to contact them back. So if you need some information, uh, it's like almost, uh, you know, the messenger, uh, please contact us and you put your name and your phone or email and they will get back to you. Uh, this one, which is like a magnifying glass, it, sh it shows the detail of the product. And this, we, we only mainly use it for the shop because it, apart from the RVs, uh, they have a shop inside uh, their building and they want to promote all the things that are used on the RVs. So uh, all the shop products will have this um, magnifying glass. Uh, then the little high, it means it's a specific photograph. Uh, as you can imagine, it's very difficult to get inside uh, bathrooms uh, loose in, in, uh, in an RV, especially the European ones. They are quite small, some of them, and you hardly can put a, a, matter, a Matterport camera inside it. Uh, so when you're doing 360, sometimes uh, it doesn't work. And for reasons that doesn't work, uh, we have like, I think in 30, we didn't manage to get two of them. We'll have a photograph uh, that will show the inside of the loo, or it can be other specific photographs like uh, special drawers, special things that, that RV has, and we put a photograph, so that's what indicates. And the last one uh, with exclamation mark is the, what I called information point. And, and that is mainly to let you know if the RV is automated or if it's manual uh, shafts and uh, also if it has aircon or if it has uh, heating, things like that. So it's specific interest points of specific things in the RVs that they thought it was worth for the client to know. Awesome, so, that, thanks for the tour of the, the matter text. I think that'll be helpful. If you could uh, switch to your full view, I think you had a different tab open perhaps. Up oh, there we go, great. So we're, we're, uh, so to make it a little bit easier, since, you're, since you all WGA and TV viewers are seeing this on a small screen, uh, we've taken off of the, the, uh, the information bar that's color coded. But I, I think as Pedro walks us through, he'll point out maybe what some of those are just to remind us as we're going through. Sure. Okay, great. So uh, I, I just go here for one of them. Uh, let's say this here in the back. And uh, I will show you the, um, because this one has all the text that we spoke about. Um, let me just get closer for him. So if we want the price tag, we click on it and the, the price comes up. Uh, that's the price of this specific RV uh, because it has some extras. It's more than the base price. Okay. Uh, so There's about 7,000 worth of extras in it already. And it gives some of the specifications size, uh, width, high. Uh, it's for four people, sleeps four, three to four people. It can eat four people and it can travel with four people. Okay. And then the client asks us to put a photograph of the specific one here and then when this was happening, which was from the 7th of April until the 25th of April, sorry. Okay. And uh, again, if you, if you needed any more information, uh, something that the client didn't want was to sh shoot this to another page. He wanted to be embedded in the tour. So people wouldn't come out and then didn't know how to come in uh, so that was something that he was avoiding. Uh, so this one will be the quick presentation video uh, about this specific, which is the Westphalia Club Joker City one. A Westphalia Club Joker City is the model most compact we have. So it's a quick introduction to this specific model. And then here, this one is actually throwing us to outside the tour, as you can see, and it goes to their specific web page. And on their web page, they have done something that I thought it was very clever, um, which is obviously they are still announcing the show. Uh, and then they put a specific 
tour that I create for them for that specific caravan. So instead of having 12, the option of looking to the whole tour, if you want just to look at this caravan is the, the RV, sorry. I keep saying caravan because it's what we call them here in Portugal. It's auto caravan and caravans. These are auto caravans, but I'll try to call it RVs. So I, I apologize. Uh, it's not, not a problem whatsoever, Thank, but thank you for <coughs> helping uh, let us understand why we might see auto caravan when we think of yeah. RV in the United for, States. For the American guys. It's I, 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 I think this is really interesting, Pedro, because I'm guessing, I recall, you actually shot each RV twice. Once as part of the actual tour of the whole place, and then an individual tour that your client could use on a site like this. Yeah, um, <laughs> to put this in perspective, uh, the, the briefing we got from the client was, okay, I want to do the tour, the tour of the show will last about two weeks and then we might close the tour or not, but uh, the promotions will be closed by the two weeks. But I want to have all of them available for my single pages, which is what I just show you uh, all year round. And, uh, you know, that was when I, when I approached a client, that was my approach. You know, I was doing cars. I thought I can do an out, uh, RV and you put on your website and you say, okay, we're going to do more than that because I need this specific tour because I do this event, but still I want to use them for the whole year. I want to, to get the, the tour for the individual RVs. So did you first sh shoot the entire event space inside, <laughs> outside RVs and then come back and then individually shoot each RV? Yeah. Well, <laughs> It's a bit more complicated than that. That's, that's, that was my first thought. Uh, we went to see the space. As you can see, I'll show in a map. It's easier. These are like two, two warehouses. Uh, and the client told me straight away that he will be filling this space with uh, auto caravans, RVs, and this one with the caravans, just the RVs, which is half of, his, of this size. And he had a front shop here. And what he asked me was, I want the shop to show, uh, I want the show to be shown, and then all the RVs have to be shown. My first thought was, okay, I'm gonna create a path. I go with the camera from outside. So everything that's here, here all orange, I will do it until the front of the RV. And then I would go back and do each individual uh, RV. Okay, that, that is the plan. That's not how things work, as you know. You guys arrange something, you put in your mind, you speak with the client. And I have to say, this client was excellent because everything we asked him and he, he promised to do, he did it and he delivered pretty much on time. But unfortunately, this uh, carpet that you see, the orange carpet, which because their color is orange, uh, didn't arrive on time. So on the first day, we only had this row. And I couldn't go and do as I wanted to because even this... Uh, RV that this was a five-day project with, with four of your team members. Well, this... Yeah, it starts being a three-day project, and then I realized now I have to ask for two extra days. Uh, today, knowing what I know, and to avoid to do a couple of days of 18 hours, I would have said seven days. And seven days. believe me, seven days would be just about right. And so, we so did it turn out to be five days of 18-hour days? Now, we did uh, two days of 18 hours, and then the rest of them was about 12 to 14 hours, uh, the other three. Uh, so, yes, it, it was very tiring, uh, but you have to have a plan in your head, and you have to adapt when you get there. And that's okay, what so you, uh, you, make lemons out of lem you make lemonade out of lemons and, uh, or orange aid, perhaps, because the orange carpet yeah. didn't show up. So how, how did you then switch okay. in order to, because you've obviously got the entire red carpet in your dollhouse here. So uh, what, what, what happened your plan? as I was saying then, sorry, it, this RV wasn't even delivered until the third day uh, of shooting. So we had a big space here and we had to move these ones out of the way for this one to come in. So I couldn't even start this side uh, because that might would have been an option. I start here and then move here. 
but no. So we decided, well, let's go step by step. And as we are near the RVs, we start and we do the inside of the RVs. Now, what that implies is that I have to be very careful and that I have to plan very well what I want to do, because as we know, I need one tour for the full thing. I need an, another tour just for the shop. And I need every single tour just for each RV. So at some points I was shooting the same on the same point. So let's say for instance, let's go for an example uh, uh, here in the middle of these ones. I'm doing one shoot on this point for the, for the tour, which I call the tour. Then I, I, I decided to call letters to hold the, all the RVs. So I start with A, B, C, D, and that, this one I think it was H and I. So I have to shoot one for my tour for the H because that shot is a good shot for it. I had to do another shot for I, which is this one. And I had another shot for this one, another one for that one here. So I had to do five shots in the same place for five different tours. That's the point. Let that me ask get... you this. If, if, if this was a perfect world and you showed up and the space was totally staged with nothing else having to have happen, could you have shot the entire space inside and outside once and then duplicated... Uh, the, the only problem you have with that, and that was my experience from a previous job, uh, is that uh, when you do like almost 1,000 points uh, scans, and for one of these uh, RVs, I probably were going to be using 30, you have to delete 970, and deleting from the um, your iPad it's a very time consuming. It's ah, so even though it sounded like that might have made sense logistically, yeah, it was too overwhelming because you literally did a thousand plus scan points. Yeah, I, I think uh, to, I can't remember at the moment, but it was near one thousand, maybe eight nine hundred. I think. Okay. Uh, I have to check on that, but uh, it, it, to be honest with you, if you think that you're going to need to do that thirty times. So you grab your tour, you do a copy, you do 30 copies of the tour, and then you have to do individually, delete at least nine or even, even if we're speaking just 500 points, it's very time consuming because as you know, when you delete something on your iPad, it might take even 30 seconds to delete one point, one scan. And I thought I would never finish this job. I know it's post-production, I can have the time to do it, but it, it will be more time consuming and as long as I have my head on the, on the right place and I have people around me to help me to keep control of this, I can do it. And we did manage to... So did you shoot each vehicle twice back to back? Meaning, I mean, were you using two mm -hmm. iPads and one iPad had... No, no, the I, I only used one iPad. And what I did is I called it a uh, tour for the main one. I called shop for the shop one, but the shop one was easy because as I started, I started with the shop. So on that one, I did delete the first, I did about 20, uh, 20 uh, that I had done here in the beginning. So the shop stayed and I used that method as you were speaking. I only shot it once. I did the copy and delete a couple of, of, of uh, scans. Okay. That, uh... that was it. But now for the, for the 30 RVs, I had to go to each individual point and scan it uh, twice and sometimes five times. And what I did, as I was explaining, on the iPad, I open uh, 30 jobs, A, B, C, D, <laughs> until O, and then the caravans were numbers one to nine. So I knew exactly in my head that this one here was letter A, this was B, C, and then D, and, that, and therefore. Were they physically labeled or you had to remember that in your head? No, I, I physically labeled them on my iPad. So my yes, iPad- I understand they're labeled on your iPad, but that that white R RV, the white truck car that's straight ahead. That, uh, that was done by the map. Literally, I, I, I started here, went all the way here, and then I start here, there, and then from here to there, and then I went around this one here. Yes, but how did you keep track of, of which which one was letter I? 
Well, be, because I start doing from from the beginning, from my. Okay, so that's in your head, actually. That you yeah. you 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 it's knew my at head. some point I, that was that was the one that was I. Yeah, because also uh, as we start doing this row, and all of them were there, I start doing A, B, C, D. So I knew when I was here that uh, I was probably in I. Uh, that's why I told you. By, by now, I, I know them all. Believe but me. Why, but why why would you need to shoot one of them five times? Well, because when when you are in an intersection like this, this photograph is good for this one, for instance, because I want to show the back of the RV. Yes. But this shot is also used for this one because I want to show the front of that one. So I'm using uh, that. You're for shooting inside and outside. So yeah. essentially, your outside shots could be, you could have put the camera, the, and, and yeah. incidentally, we're talking about a Matterport Pro 2 3D camera, correct? Yeah. Pro Everything 2D. that you've done is with the Matterport Pro 2 3D. Yeah. Uh, okay. We didn't use so any other if you're, camera. If you're I at had... the intersection of four or five RVs, then yeah. essentially when you're scanning outside, you're, you could be in the same exact spot in five different okay. models. Yeah, which, as you well said, that only applies for the outside shots because if I show you on the um, on the one we're looking at, for instance, uh, the tour itself, just for this uh, one, you see the map, you see the, the other ones around because of the scans that were done. If I put you on the map, let me just take this. You see that this is the caravan that I want, but you, you're seeing the one next to it because they are side by side. The space yes. was very small. But if I go here, I can see everything in it. And then, you know, there's more things here. For instance, the client wants me to show the inside for eating. But if you go to the next scan, it's a bed. So you have to show that as a bed also. So for the nights. Uh... Oh, Pedro, you got to go slower for me because there's, there's like so many questions here. So <laughs> did you, so, so you opened the bed at some point during your scanning process so that you could show it open and closed. Did, yeah, this did, that one was create problems? did that create problems go, at getting scanning errors? Look, uh, uh, sometimes it can create, I have to be quite honest with you. Uh, I think Matterport does a great job with the GPS positioning things 90% of the times. But when you have those 10% that you cannot grab something, it, it's it's a nightmare. You can lose hours trying to grab a point that you need like a couple of scans like this. Uh, on this specific one, I think we were so, okay. So the, the, the problem or challenge was the environment changed. So as you're moving the camera in towards the RV, now the the bed went down yeah uh, and but obviously this cannot be my first scan because matterport will not recognize that this picture is different from this one here yeah and he thinks okay maybe he's pointing me to another place another uh, rv so i had to do something like i think i went to the the back here and uh, i showed the back of it because i had already this scan so i did a double scan and then I walk through to to get to this point where. Okay. So awesome. There. So this is this is a great tip or technique here is when you have to change the environment. In this case, you wanted to show seats and bed, but yeah. you couldn't really go from one to the other without the Matterport scan saying, I'm sorry, but I can't, I don't know how to connect this. It's, it's confusing. So you then went to the back of the, so you, you put the table, the bed you down. To find the point you went, that's common. You went yeah. to the back of the van. So essentially you probably scanned twice, the, at least twice the same oh, yeah. path in order to be able to get it essentially open and closed, bed open, bed closed. And, and then obviously in post-production, you have to delete those ones because you're going to have some points that you have three, four, five scans that are all the same. And you, you might, uh, as we did, we might have done this at nighttime. And when you look, there is a window there. And I cannot have a scan that's black there when, when you're walking through. So I had to delete all the scans that I did. For instance, in this instance, I think we, we should that particular one at night. Because as, uh, when you're working 12 to 18 hours, yeah, you're going to get nighttime also. And if you're looking at the window, 
it will be noticeable because all of a sudden that is dark. So I had to delete all those scans afterwards and just make sure that, you know, the ones that were done, once I, I had to do this, wasn't done at night. Because if you turn around and you cannot forget this is 360, it will be dark. So I had to make sure that at least I did it during the daytime, even if I had, you know, set the camera from the night before or just finishing my, my shift. Okay, at least this position where I, I want it now. And hopefully tomorrow we will catch and we'll, we can do this. And did you take so, the camera inside this particular van? Uh, we, we, we took inside every single uh, RV. Even okay. the ones so, if you, so boom, stop there for a moment. Where is the camera? Is it on a tabletop? No, the camera is uh, at the seating, at the driving seat. To okay, be honest. so how did you do that without losing your, uh, your camera from falling over? Uh, we, we, <laughs> I actually went to a, um, a shop uh, to get a, a piece of wood and cut it to the size of mostly all the seats. And um, so I had the platform to put my um, tripod on top of it. Was and the platform a round disc? Was it the shape of the chairs? Was it? Uh, no, it was re uh, rectangular, to be honest with you. It was, okay, so you actually had rectangle. And so I, I guess at that point, you're figuring that your tripod legs have been minimized. Uh, yes, they were in the smallest position. Smallest position. So you now knew what the maximum position was of your legs and your wood that got cut was just a little bit bigger than what the smallest setting footprint of that camera was. Yeah. And um, sometimes that, that the one I'll show you was one of the smallest ones. So, you know, you have to adapt with whatever you can. I actually can show you the bit that we use. We forgot in one of the scans. <laughs> so it, this is the this is information. quite an undertaking. Did did you practice in a car or RV even before no, you showed up with your we, client? We, we did the shooting in Oporto, which is about uh, 300 kilometers from Lisbon. But this specific client, he also had a shop, uh, which is literally 10 minutes, 15 minutes away from my home in Lisbon. So what we did, we went there I think about four times uh, we we spend about four half days going there and trying to uh, figure out all the problems we could have, like bathroom spaces. Are we going to do mirrors? Are we going to put uh, the camera in uh, in the seat as we just show you? Uh, so all this was pre work that we did. So when we get to a portal we didn't realize, oh, okay, I need to do something here, which I can't. No, we had everything studied. And specific, these ones, they are like, they have a bed here on top. And something they want to show is, okay, this is actually a small RV that you can just drive into any city, any car park, and you can go inside uh, like a normal car. But it has two beds. I just show you one in the front, but there's one here in the back. and that was the most challenging thing. Uh, you can see there's a loo here. They have a, a portable loo uh, down here be, be, uh, below this seat. But on top of the seat, I managed to, to get the shot of the, of the top bed. Wow. And, and to get this, it's where things really have to be studied. And you have to try it out before you get to the, to, to the so, other job. Because we lost about five to six hours to figure out this one. Just to figure out how to do this shot was five to six hours. Yeah, and it was trying, trying and see, because the problem you have is you have this shot, which the, the bed is up. It's against this, the top of the ceiling. So you have, I can walk here without my head touching the back of the bed. And the camera has this shot and it has this space and it's great, it recognizes it. But when I go to the next one and I, bring the bed down, all of a sudden he's saying, hey, we're not in the same space. So he say, adjust your mirrors, uh, your, your windows, and you know you don't have mirrors, you, you know it, it's no windows, you know that you, you have, have- to go back outside and scan again to get back inside to get that shot? Well, the shot outside doesn't give you much because 
you, you can hardly say it, but the bed is on top there. Uh, if uh, and what what we found out was okay. It recognizes it if I bring the bed down, but if I bring the bed down and I put the camera halfway, and that's a tip for everyone, so you don't you guys don't have to go through what I we went through. Okay, this is my shot to connect the next shot. You are you can see still the space below here. And you see the bit of the bed and the space above. And now it's only this bar here that is not very convinced. And it will tell you, uh, I don't think I'm in the right place, but it puts me in the right place. You know, when you do the scan and say, ah, okay, pay so attention the, because the error, might message, the, the error message that you got was, I don't think I'm in the right, the scan's in the right spot. But when you looked at your iPad, you knew it was in the right spot. Yeah. So from that one, now I can go to the next one, which is on top here and show the bed. And this, he already accepts it. And that's how we actually managed to get around this. And, uh, you know, this space here, to be honest with you, one person can be here because you have the kitchen here, you have the bed on top and you have the loo here. And with these first uh, RVs, these four RVs, they're all pretty much the same. So I'm if I go- I'm to confused though. Uh, yeah. did you need to use your wooden plank? Did you need to have the, because it didn't look like much of a ledge to put the camera. Oh, it's here. Uh, it, it, it is big enough. And uh, so did you collapse the tripod like this and just watched it like a hawk so that it. it yeah, you, you put the three foot here or sometimes, uh, you know, in extreme situations, if you don't feel that your tripod is secure enough, you put two legs here. And if you have space, you put another leg up here. Uh, you know that's the tripod. You can open the one of the arms or the three arms. It, we had the situation where we had to do that because I didn't thought it was too stable. So we did that. But the problem that brings is you'll see one of the legs in the shot. And so we try to avoid this. And what we did is we put the three uh, legs here and we, because you have quite a high space here, we brought the camera down as much as we could on the tripod. So we're using almost the minimum size on high, but because the legs are together, it brings you up and you can get this shot. Uh, so that, that's, to be honest with you, Dan, it, it, you have to adapt to each and every single RV because all of them, even if they look the same, they are different. Uh, this one here, for instance, it's exactly the same, but it has a bed that's mounted on the back. Sorry, let me just get you the shot. And so when you're showing these challenges, it's not just hooray, I, I got the car, I got the RV scanned successfully as I intended. Now you had to go do it again for the individual shot that your individual Matterport tour that yeah. your client we, wanted. We did it as we went along. So we tried 90% of them we did as we were going through the road, uh, the, the red carpet or orange carpet, uh, and we get inside, for instance, this one was B, we tried to do everything uh, that we, we needed to, all the shots that we needed for the inside. On this one, and we did also that for all of them, you can see the kitchen bit. The kitchen bit is, uh, you cannot see the, the gas thing there, but if you go here, it's open. And that's the fridge, it's open. And we can show that on that shot. So and did then- Did that create a problem that you changed the environment or- and, and you No, th these ones, no, because we had the rule of at the door, it's always uh, closed. And then when we go inside uh, on the first one, it's open, but then all the other ones are closed. Sorry, let me just- Is get that it. something you practiced? Uh, yeah, again, on the rehearsals. And I cannot stretch enough how much important it is to have rehearsals, especially for a thing that you're doing, that you know it's so out of the box and it's the first time it's being done and you don't have experience with it. So the client was great. He let me go there and spend the time there. And we, we, we tried and tried until we were satisfied with what we wanted. But small things like this is not a problem. A problem is when you have doors, as you know, and the door is closed and then it has to be open. Uh, that's when you're gonna have problems. This one for- That's when you needed to do the, the you're, you're scanning from where you can't see the doors open and closed. 
Yeah, or you have to leave the door halfway open so you can get inside and things like that, small tricks. But uh, another thing that the client asked me was, hey, look, I want to see everything inside, but I don't want to have 12, 10 uh, scans inside because I want to have enough scans for to see the space I have. So here you have what's supposed to be a table. The table is not there, but if I come to this scan, there it is, the table, and you can see that you can adjust that. Uh, yeah. the, the oven is there, the fridge is there. If you have any doubts when you come to this one, you have the bed, seeing from the top, as we show the other one. The other one you could show from the back. This one you cannot show in the back because the bed is positioned exactly the opposite of the other one. So that's a driving seat there. Uh, so if Pedro, th excuse me, there's a number of things that opened and closed. Uh, bed opening and closing uh, 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 tables. The, uh, the table fridges. the the uh, the stove top the refrigerator yeah. uh, was your client with you to do this staging uh, yes the client was with us and I cannot say how important it is uh, we, we, we were blessed with the client that we had the client uh, not only treated us very well uh, food wise uh, hotel when we were there you know uh, i asked him one day to give me the keys because i want to finish something and they were very tired it was one of the last days i sent everyone home and he gave me the keys of the of the building with all these rvs and say i'll see you tomorrow or in a couple of hours i stayed there until four six in the morning i think and then we were back there at eight the next day so I went to the hotel, slept two hours, but he gave me the keys. So I cannot yeah. say more. And how important it was for them to be with me, uh, because to be honest with you, the first time I, we did the rehearsal for this uh, RV, I didn't even know there was a bed up there. That's how much I knew about RVs. And he told me, oh, did you shoot the bed? And I said, which bed? The ones that you put on the seat? No, I didn't. No, no, no. I'm saying the one on the top. So, oh, no, I didn't even know there was one. Okay, so second time rehearsal. Okay, that's how we found out there was beds there. Okay, um, so, so you, you really did need your client present to do the yeah. staging of open, close, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that, that on some days you were there as long as 18 hours. How long was the client there on the, I mean, were they there 12 uh, hour days? Apart from that day, uh, that I sent the crew about after 14 hours, I think, home and the client. Uh, apart from that, he was there with us every single day from dawn to late hours of the night. We started at six in the morning, I think, uh, usually. And then uh, we would finish one, two in the morning sometimes. And the client was there all the time with us. The, the client really want this is uh, is a, a person with a vision and uh, as we were doing this he was already thinking the next year tour he wants to do a night mode the day mode he wants us to put like beds and uh, special effects he was already thinking ahead of us uh, so okay. it, it's really good to have someone like that uh, okay awesome now i see there's a number of matter tags there yeah uh, uh, so How did these you keep one, track of all this? Did, did, did you add the tags? Did your client add the tags? We, we add all the tags. So I told the client, uh, would, we would, the client decided he would get four uh, tags maximum on the door. So every time that you, before we go to the door, if we have the four, uh, the both videos would put, sometimes you only have three tags here. On this one in the inside, you have the extra ones. This is the, the one I told you that you feel the name and if you want to be contacted. Uh, so if I click, sorry. If so I click did your client give you all the tags in a spreadsheet? Uh, no, what, what he did was because I gave him the tour, he took pictures uh, of it and he said, well, not for these ones because he told me to put it on top of the table, and that's fine. And then the, we had someone from the client side that was graphic designer. And he would send us the photographs, for instance, for this one here, it's a specific table that it can collapse in half. And there it is. It has a different setting. It can rotate. So you want us to introduce this photo. And that's a photo that you can see uh, that and actually comes from the, the maker of the RV. And 
I have similar shots, but not exactly the same shot. You know, okay, so it, did, were you responsible for shooting any 2D photos or exporting uh, snapshots? No, uh, no the, client... the, the client supplied me all that. Okay. Uh, and our and agreement how was- How did the client provide the photos to you? Oh, he, he would send it uh, through Dropbox or um, uh, the other one. I can't remember the name. Huh? And how did you keep track of of a folder in a Dropbox? Because you're calling that RVJ and he's calling it the Dreamliner or whatever oh, that no, is. No, he's not. He, he, went, he, he went with us. He would call it the Dreamliner, uh, but he would always call it in the beginning uh, RV. D R V J because you know he knew that was our language. Okay, so he so there was a, there was a nomenclature for for how to communicate and yeah. so and that's how did important. he send you the the uh, YouTube videos? He sent is that yeah. just it? yes? He, he sent me the YouTube videos. He sent me all the photographs. But, but, but I'm trying to understand how because this is this is a lot of tactical stuff. So did he put them in an email? Did he put them in a, a Google Sheet? No, uh, we, we create a Google Sheet uh, for, for most all of them, but some were just sent by email and late changes and things like that uh, were all done uh, literally uh, by email sometimes. And, uh, by email, because I can imagine that could drive you crazy because you, it not, looks like not, you're dealing with hundreds of patterns. Uh, if you create um, folders, for I create folders for every single uh, RV, and they had photos and video folders inside each of them. And I knew when I received them, I'll put them straight away. So when I knew I, I needed, I would go to that folder and I would find everything I needed. Ah, okay, good. And, okay. and but I, I know I keep referring these as Matterport matter tags, but they actually don't exactly look like Matterport matter tags. So uh, yeah. is, is this your design of what you have, have implemented? Yeah. We, we design and uh, I work with another platform, which is Treatis, and that allow me to, to put all this. Put okay, the, Treatis. The logo. Uh, so T-R-E-E-D-I-S dot com, Treatis, yeah. uh, a Matterport overlay, uh, and you use that platform so that uh, so you could have control of what the matter tags looked like. Yeah, and... I didn't show you this before, but I'm showing you now. They have uh, the chance, you know, when you have a, a tour, you, you do your video and all the photographs come here uh, of, you know, the living room, whatever. Here, we can customize that. I can put my own photographs and I can use links, deep links for these ones. So if I want to go to the shop, I just have to press this and it navigates me to the shop. And I'm in the oh, shop. Awesome. So you're using the Matterport highlight reel. No, uh, it's, not a, it's not the Matterport highlight reel. It's uh, something that 3 d has that replaces the Matterport um, reel. Okay, with, great. With so instead of it being a Matterport highlight reel, it's actually uh, a overlay done by Treatis, again, T-R-E-E-D-I-S.com, that's enabling you to have these nice looking uh, thumbnails yeah. uh, rather than maybe taking a, a photo that might be a little bit harder to grasp. Yeah, and you can uh, divide these in subcategories. So I have here RVs that have the car with the RV itself. These are caravans, which is the just the normal RV but needs a car to pull it. Uh, and then you have uh, these, which is different things, which is the shop and the catalogs. Uh, so are there three different uh, uh, toggles? Yeah, there was- Yeah, you can put as many, you, you can create subgroups. This is pretty much like a menu. If you come here, I'll have the menu and I have the RVs here, I can open it and I have all the names of the RVs, accessories, uh, if I want to go to the accessories. And uh, so it will bring me to the shop again. If I want this, Caravan. These are the, the, the types of RVs that exist. Yes, I, I'm, I'm also, so. forgive me, but I, I see in the bottom right, uh, the text media PT. So, yeah. uh, so Treatis enables you to put your logo and a link there. And I'm guessing your client was okay with you doing that. 
yeah, th this is a white label. So, you know, uh, I, I'm, first of all, uh, I have to say thank you to Treaties because they actually enable us to provide the live uh, feed for the 15 days. We had to have a very close relation with them and we had to change things. It was a learning curve for them and it was a learning curve for us, but they did respond very well. And that's the beauty. That's why I like to work with them. And that's the reason why I'm actually letting you know, I'm paying for a white label, but I'm letting you guys know who I work with uh, because you are all colleagues of ours. And uh, you know, I, I appreciate when someone tells me something that I like and I can look, go and look for it. And, 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 it, and it looks like you're using uh, the, the, the treatise uh, overlay on steroids, because I, I want to say yeah. in the top left corner, I presume that overlay of the client's logo. Uh, yeah, that, that has a link to their uh, website. So if I click on it, I go straight yeah. to the uh, But then the again, that's, that's treatise that you're using to that's accomplish treatise. that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, literally, I, I've just used Matterport for the single tours. Uh, for the inside and outside of each single caravan. But for the tour itself, I had to use treaties because I want to give more. I want them to be able to choose the kind of RV. So if they come here, they have these two different car, car uh, RVs and I can show them. And you, you don't even have to look for the whole tour. You just come to the menu and you are inside it. You, you can find so out what you want. So were there two ways to easily find that RV? One was that uh, highlight reel at the bottom. Yeah. So and, so, and there you had three different subsets. So, um, uh, yeah, we, we try to make easy for people to find it out. So if I want to go to the Swan, I, I know a specific one I'm looking for. I yeah. just click on it. And that also takes me there as the many one did. So, uh, we want people not only to enjoy the, the discovery of the tour and like being on the site, but if you are the client that knew exactly what he wanted and you only want to look at that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, at that RV, then he could go and do it. Awesome. Could you take us outside? Sure. Outside? Uh... Outside the building. Oh, okay. Uh, what so kind of problems or tips did you, would you what, what problem did you have to overcome shooting outside here? Well, uh, I had a, a big job before where I did about 10,000 10, meters outside. So I'm quite experienced with outside shooting for, with the uh, Matterport camera. And you, cannot, you can only use it in three ways. If it's cloudy, which this day was cloud, as you can see, or if you are in the dawn or in the early morning uh, or early evening, and you have like half an hour to one hour where you can shoot and you pray for it not to disalignment uh, and uh, <laughs> you, you pray that you can do it. Otherwise you have to go there. Uh, and, the other job I can tell you I was doing- Is that, is there a, a saint for that? Uh, saint Peter, I think. Saint, saint Peter, okay, just <laughs> checking. Peter uh, is in, in English. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I guess the tip here is if you're going to shoot outdoors, if the, if the Matterport camera can see the sun, you're likely going to have a problem. Yeah, so, at uh, least misalignment, uh, that's for sure. Even if you are able to do the scan, 80% of the times you will have a misalignment with your next or the, the scan before. Okay, any other learnings that you, that you could, the tips that you share about outdoors? Outdoors, uh, you have to be crazy enough to use the Matterport uh, Pro 2 camera to do outsides, to be honest. Uh, I, I could have, the, the 10,000 meters I told you, it took me about two weeks every six in the morning to eight, nine in the morning if it was cloudy. And then uh, every afternoon before the sun went down. And then on one day I was so, irritated because I couldn't align anything and I lose I lost about two hours that I decided to do 360 photos that took me half an hour and I did yes. the whole school. yes okay and so the, uh, the, the tip is if you're going to do Matterport Pro 2 3D scanning you need to be a little bit crazy 
in, in order to accomplish this because it, it could drive you nuts. Yeah, so and when, you this, because when you did the outdoor, too, uh, sorry, when, when you did the outdoor scanning, when did you do that in this project? Oh, that that was the first thing, to be honest with you. That wasn't the first day uh, we got there. Uh, it was a Saturday, so there wasn't a lot of cars around. Uh, you can see there's a couple of license plates that would appear. We just covered them with uh, white paper. Uh, th that literally, that's not post-production, obviously, but it's because at that time you couldn't do it uh, with uh, Matterport. You didn't have the option of, you know, painting. So the, the, the Matterport blur tour blur tool that's now available in Matterport Workshop wasn't yeah. available to you at the time that you began no. the project. And to be honest with you, I will still use this method. It, you, all you need is some test tape and a white piece of paper and you glue it on the on the car's front or back. And then you have to have someone to take it off once you finish. Otherwise you might yeah. get someone. Get anybody come saying, hey, what are you doing to my car? Uh, if you see someone coming, you always try to say, look, I'm doing a 360 photo. And for your privacy, I don't want to show your license plate. Okay. Uh, and 90% of the times so or 95% they say, yeah, that's fine. Or, or I'm moving my car now anyway. So we just took the white paper and move Okay. On. It so, was uh, so interesting because I, I, I want to say that Matterport would recommend not shooting outdoors as your first scans because that could create some alignment issues. Did yeah. you find that you had any extra alignment issues because you began outside? No, not really. Uh, this, uh, I agree with what they say. And I you always try to do at least, I would have done probably this front first and then come here and do the back, uh, the outside. But uh, in this case, no, I actually even shot it in two different days. This shot is already a different day. You can see it's not yeah. uh, cloudy anymore. It's a bit sunny, but I think it was a sunset or a sunrise. And I had to open the door because I thought it was a better shot with the, the front door open. Okay. And uh, Can you take us to the catalog through. room? Yeah. So that's an office. And the client didn't want us to do the office at the beginning. Uh, he just thought, okay, we don't need the office. We need the shop. We need the, all the other space. And so look, you're going to be empty. It's going to look awful in the, here, I'll have a black space. So in the lunchtime, while he was preparing the lunch for us, I did this in like in half an hour. I did very small scans. And one of my colleagues, uh, my brother-in-law, just suggested to put some catalogs from the makers of the RVs. We didn't make much of it, but the client used the opportunity to put some, as you can see, some advertising because they're called Go Caravaning. So we just put the jackets the other way around on the on the shares. So you know, when we all came, you can see it's still caravanning. But so the when we were angles that, that we're looking at, I'm thinking those are matter tags that are implemented by Treatise. Yeah, again, I'm using everything uh, with Treatise. So when you come here, uh, these are actually the catalogs. And that was something that we decided in post production. So what happens said, when you click on, a, on one of those catalogs? It just opens the PDF of the catalog straight away. Okay. So that is supplied by the, in this case, Penimar, which is the maker. Okay. And you, you can see all the catalog with all the caravan, the RVs that they have. Okay. And so if you go back, if you could go, if you go back to the, what I call the catalog room, which, which was actually a working office there. Yeah. So I, I think I heard a couple things. First, that was, that was not a space your client wanted scanned. Um, but you had a vision for what you thought this space could be used for. Yeah, well, I had a vision of not letting a black hole on my, uh, on my map, on yeah. the, the 3D. Okay. Uh, it started then, like that. And so who put the catalogs out? Uh, my brother-in-law. Uh, okay, and decided. so when, you're, when your client saw the catalogs, he go, the client went, ah, I could link to that actual catalog. Well, my, my brother-in-law had that idea of actually linking that, but we didn't know exactly if it would work or if we were going to use it. Uh, because I even thought if we put all, the whole 10 brands, I can link exactly. And the client said, no, there's no need. You, you put a bunch of them and then we just call them. Uh, we show their logo and that makes it more sense uh, for us. And so it was an evolution of an idea 
that starting with nothing really and actually became quite important for us and for them so mainly. So, and what was your client's reaction after the fact, all done, implemented? Oh, he, he did love it. Um, he, he was very impressed and he knew it, we are in the forefront of this. He even showed to, I'm not, I'm not sure if it was all of the brands, but at some of the brands and he told them, look, you guys should be doing this for us. I'm doing it. Uh, I'm showing you something here that, you know, in future, you guys should provide us this. It seems like are... a brilliant idea is to say, OK, uh, we can't, we, you know, we're putting 30 RVs in this space, um, but there are many other iterations, versions by manufacturers either not represented or we're not representing their full line. So essentially this showroom is just expanded to every possibility for the, of what this client sells. Yeah, and uh, I knew the feedback at least of two of them. Uh, at least one of them was in Spain, maker, and they were very impressed and uh, they were asking, how, how did you manage to do this? Uh, because something I haven't shown you yet is like, uh, usually when you see a, a caravan, a RV, you don't see the, the bathrooms. You don't see the loo. Why? Because here, for instance, on this one, the loo is on the right and the shower is on the left. And you have doors. And I can okay, show you. So how did you solve that puzzle? Every single RV was different, but you have to think ahead. So if I go here, you have the, the open door for the shower. And you know these are deluxe RVs. They are quite, quite fancy. But this door is still closed. But if I go inside the the shower, okay, that's my chance of looking at some details of the shower. But the door is still closed. Some of them we open the door straight away, and you could just walk from here to there. On this case, we had the chance of doing a, one here where we left half of the door. And on this one, it's one of the ones I think we cannot get inside because the doors were so close. So this is a bad example, but uh, let me just get to another one. Do, do you think if you were to do this space again, you would use a, a Rico Theta Z1 to shoot the bathrooms and inside? Uh, to be honest, on the trials, uh, I have the Insta, uh, I have the Insta camera. Insta 361X. Yeah. And uh, I didn't like it, the quality, because the quality, you know, it's okay if you're only using that camera, but when you're mixing two cameras, I'm, maybe because I came from a television background and I, I have to do image control. So for what goes on air, uh, that probably. Uh, puts me not want to mix two kinds of qualities. And I, I know it can be a bit evasive. You, you can see the camera there uh, on the I'm, mirror. I'm just of... thinking how hard it was to get the bathroom and the shower in that tight space where you might have just used your Insta 361X and you know took three shots, one in the hall, one inside each and, and call it a day. Yeah, I, I know. I, I don't make my life easy for me, for myself. I know that, but okay. I'm a perfectionist. And, uh, Incidentally, I, I try you mentioned to. that you you have a team of four. So you have your wife, you have your, uh, is it brother-in-law? The brother-in-law and my sister. And your sister, yeah. what were they doing? Did you have a second camera that was running? No, just one camera. And uh, uh, they were like my assistants. And what they were doing is, as you can guess, you know, all these 30 RVs, they are not stage ready for you. So we were doing like six at the time that were stage ready. We finished with one, they would go and move to another one, uh, changing a bit the looks of it, uh, using the same books or the same mugs, things like that, but in the different display. So, so you provided the staging services as well. It wasn't, you didn't just show the, the, up and everything, all the pillows were, were fluffy with the dimple in them. Yeah, uh, the client also up on that, to be honest with you. Okay. But uh, mainly, that, that is always one of my concerns. I Could want you have to done this picture. shoot just by yourself and with the client, or did you really need help? To no, I, I really need help. And we, if you think that I'm doing five scans at one point on the outside, I need to have someone with me reminding me 
oh, you missed that uh, RV. You have to do for that, R you have to open the job for that RV also. And for that, I have, uh, my sister is excellent. She is like, a, she has a photograph memory of any rule that I tell her, she will remind me at the point. So you actually had one person on your team acting as continuity to, to make sure that everything that was supposed to yeah. be shot got shot. Uh, it was one to two people at some times. My wife also did that job. Uh, uh, but you have always to have someone to remind you. And, you know, when you're working 12 or 18 hours, uh, I like to think that I can do it and my brain is fresh, but okay. sometimes it gets... Yes, yeah, I can appreciate that. Can you take us to the store? Sure. One of the things that, that, that struck me in the store was, uh, in fact, let's take a look at one of those, those matter tags uh, so we can see a, a particular product as an example, please. Uh, these are glasses, uh, so it takes you to the page where yeah, they sell. Okay, so if you could come off that page. Now, uh, just, if you could just hold it for one second, uh, yeah, full screen. So even if your client gave you a list of all the matter tags of, of, of each link for shopping, how did you even know that those glasses matched up with that link? Again, uh, it, it, it would take, so when I send him the tour, it would take like a picture of this bit and he would put uh, in, um, send a, a, an icon saying, I want this, uh, this to be to that link. So, so he sent me a, a, a sheet with the links that I needed to. So you sent your client a snapshot from the tour. No, I, I sent him the tour uh, before the tax. And, uh, and then he would take a snapshot and he would put um, some information on that shot. And he would tell me that's where on those glasses, you can put this link. So and was your client a collaborator on the tour or no, no, just you sent the tour, it's a public link. No, it's a public link, yeah. Public correct. link. Client then took a snapshot, yeah. screen grab, and then somehow annotated the screen grab to say, this cup is, is letter coded letter A, and then here's the link for letter A. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And that was very time consuming. And I had to check every single link because some of the links were wrong. And uh, we had to get back to the client and say, well, I don't think that's classes. That might be a portable loo. And oh, yes, my mistake. Here it is the right link and things like that. So yeah, it is time consuming. Uh, just one thing that I want to show you that you probably didn't notice. This is what matter, as you know, matter tags show you. And I can just click there and it takes me to the site uh, that I showed you before. Uh, this was an option that the client decided to choose because I provided to him because I don't need that tag. I can just press here on the magnifying glass and that's 3Ds and that will take me to the page uh, the same way. Okay. But the client thought it was a good idea if you were hovering above it to show what it is the lettering of what it is is cups and uh, mugs. So I offered that, <laughs> it was a bit sad because I had already done all the tags and then I noticed this and said, look, I actually have this option. Would you like that? And when you say, oh yes, please. So we had to redo everything. <laughs> and we so, still get 50 tags. Do you know how many matter tags are in this tour? Uh, just on the shop, I think I have about 150. Uh, outside the shop on the tour itself, I have about 150 also. So I would say about 300 tags. Okay. So when you talk about that, you originally quoted the job thinking, oh, this is a three-day job for four people. And it actually took you five days with four people. And in hindsight, you would want to do this for seven days yeah. is base your quote. All this post-production on matter tags, is that part of the seven days or is that yet? No, no, no. Uh, seven days is the shooting. It's a scan. Uh, then I probably had another seven to 10 days uh, editing this and going back and forth to make it perfect. Uh, and, and, and that is something that, you know, you, you should, but I, I haven't... Uh, 
take in account, I, I took in account probably two, three days of editing. Uh, so when you do this kind of job, because it was the first time, you know, that you, you run a risk, but then again, it's a challenge to you and you, you try to put as much as you can on the job itself. And when you have a good relation with the client, that also helps, to be honest with you. So if you were to quote this project again, you would base it on 14 or 15 work days. Yeah. Or definitely. is that, fifth, let's say 15 work days times four people or seven days no, times it, four people and one and seven days times one person? No, I would do uh, 14 days uh, as the whole. It doesn't matter how many people I take. It, because as you said, if I want to do this kind of by myself, you only need one person. But in this case, having three extra people helping out, it did actually help in being just the five days or the seven days time-wise. Otherwise, it would have been probably 10, 12 days. And uh, the client knew that and the client appreciated the effort that we put. And, uh, you know, you, you got back to us and said, look, you guys really came out of your way to do this. I know that. And uh, I, I'm putting my hopes in this. Uh, it's a thing that has never been done before, but you guys actually went a mile above it. So thank you very much. And, you know, and today we are friends, to be honest with you, with the client. Uh, we just had him last week coming to our house to have dinner or lunch with us. And uh, it's it's really a good relation that you create. And I know that we're going to have future works together and we're going to create innovations. Uh, at the moment now, uh, Tradies even allows me to do special things. I can put a, a monitor inside. We have some of the RVs, they have TVs. I can even put an advertising for the Go Caravaning for the client, for instance, which I couldn't at that time last month. So we will be innovating in the next tour that we're going to be doing for them. And uh, that's what the client wants. And uh, that, that's how we will be doing it. But yeah, when you're doing the budget, you know, it, it's at the moment for me, it's also a question of loving to do what you do. But I also have to, we also have to get paid for it. And uh, in, the ratio might not be the, the correct one, but you're always learning. So next time, uh, I think uh, with another client, if someone comes now, or if I get a client from this client, like the, the makers of the caravans, they ask me to go to Spain and do it. You know, awesome. it's already worth the investment. So it, that's where you have to think about it. You cannot think in a, in a closed chapter for you. You have to think, okay, what can I take from this? Not only what I've learned, what I'm able to, to, and that I have to tell you then, thank you very much for inviting me for, for this show because that allows me to share with all my colleagues and people that I respect and I've been listening to them and uh, learning with them. And I hope that people can learn a bit with me, not that I have much for them to learn, but you know, I've done something that some people probably never did before. And uh, if they can learn something with me, it's great because that's what, what a platform exists for. And that's the best thing we I've been taking for the last year and a half that I've been in your platform. So. In the Thank Weekend Round Network Forum, WGANForum.com. Thank you. So, Pedro, I, I think what I'm hearing was that, that even though you did practice days with, the, with your client's showroom that was located near you, and even though you had a plan of how you were going to approach this, there were things that came up that were unexpected, and there were things that took way more, much more time than you had anticipated. So uh, some of the things that were unexpected is like you show up and the, the orange carpet's not complete yet, meaning all the vehicles are not in place and you're, you're rejiggering how you're gonna shoot the space based on yeah. what's available on that day. Because of the missing RV that arrived on the third day, yeah. I, I had to shoot the same carpet, uh, the, uh, the whole corridor, or corridor and a half twice. And, uh, you know, you know, you have to do it because and, and, you did all the shots. Yeah. And I think what I'm, I think what I'm hearing is this is one of those things where you close your eyes and you say, I love what I do. This is really hard, but I'm going to do everything I can to make this absolutely the most awesome project for my client and good things will come as a result of that. Uh, yeah. 
And mm-hmm. to be honest with you, because as I, as you already told, I work with the family. You know, we had uh, almost a week all together working really hard, but it broke us together. And uh, only for that, it's already almost worth it to do, have done this job. And we met this amazing family, which is the client, uh, his mother and himself, very, very helpful. If I would ask him a thing, he would, uh, he would do it straight away. And we created a relation. So I already came with something good. Uh, I have a couple of friends that I didn't have uh, three months ago. And okay, they are my clients, but if they are not my clients, I, I'm sure they will stay my friends. And I, we can all say that the four of us. So yeah, it's, it's very good to be doing something that you love and you can take whatever you can take, but always take what, what not, not only the money side of it, but what life brings it to you. And, you know, we were in pandemic time, people could not travel. I, I was able to travel 300 kilometers, stay in a hotel that was empty, just with the two rooms for us almost because no one was able to do that. And, you know, I, I'm blessed because I was able to work. And unfortunately, a lot of people were not able to work. Uh, I was blessed because I could, we could travel and I was together with my family. So even if if it's the only thing we took out of this, that would have already been 100% great. That's awesome. And it, it, it sounds like you'll continue to do work with this client. Uh, there are uh, manufacturers that are uh, interested now, perhaps in yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. factory tour. Uh, perhaps there's other uh, R- RV um uh, spaces uh, outside of your mm-hmm. client area that might yeah. even have you travel to go shoot their space. I could even imagine there's some Matterport service providers that have now, you know, watched the show and say, oh my gosh, this is way too hard. I, I, I didn't think it would be that hard to do, to do this and get that kind of result. I think maybe I actually need to engage uh, text, uh, text media PT and have them collaborate with me to shoot it because I don't have the patience, the energy to actually tackle something that is, I, I guess I would, I would say it's, it's super hard work to make something look so easy. So my guess is that the, the all of us that, that just start walking through the, the space and go, oh, okay, well, that that's cool. Don't realize there's a lot of magic of how you actually accomplish doors opening and closing, tabletops opening and closing, bathroom and showers open and closing, and doing this while the environment's changing. So it's, it's, this was really, a, it turned out to be a Herculean task yeah. to uh, accomplish this. We haven't even talked about managing matter tags. I, I just could imagine you went insane because it sounded like you may have changed your matter tags two, three, or four times, times yeah. hundreds of tags. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't have done with the help again of my sister, my brother-in-law. And if you allow me, uh, my wife's name is Elsa. My sister's name is Fedra. And my brother-in-law is Miguel. But I also have to say thank you to the graphic guys from uh, the client, which is Miguel Felice, uh, the client Alexandra and his mother, uh, Don Isabel, uh, because and tra- treaties that help us out in all of this uh, venture. Uh, because without them, the work you have seen would never been able to, to present it to you the way we did. And I hope that you guys actually have time to go and see the tour and enjoy it. And uh, any questions that you might have, feel free to come back to me and ask me. And uh, as far as I can, and I know who I will help you out. Uh, and as Dan says, if someone wants me to do something similar for them, We'll be more than happy and we will be packing to, to go and see you. Awesome. In, in fact, uh, you're in the We Get Around Network forum paid uh, at Pedro Tech 69. So uh, people can find you there. They can also find you at text at uh, Text Media PT, your company, textmediapt.com. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pedro, bef- before we uh, 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 finish up here is uh, just an open-ended question. Is there are there any other tips that you feel like we didn't get to that you really wanted to to cover? I'm I'm sure there will be some to be honest, but uh, uh, 
not that I can remember at the top of my head, but uh, we had the list, didn't we? <laughs> uh, have we, we gone through? We, we covered a lot. I, yeah. You know, I, I think I would end with probably two things that I'll bring up. One is in terms of, of uh, uh, pricing without asking you specifically what you charged on this job. I would just say I could imagine matter tags are going to continue to change. So I would in, in, encourage whatever the shoot price is, there's still a price for maintenance, support, uh, and hosting. And hosting. hosting. Yeah. Hosting, uh, maintenance, yeah. and support. Yeah, and as you can uh, see, these clients, I have uh, 30 RVs plus the shop and plus the tour. So we're speaking about 32 spaces in um, in Matterport. And uh, yes, there is a, a price per year for the client that includes that. And that I learned with you. It's not the price of only the hosting. It's the maintenance and it's the upkeeping. And it makes all the sense in, in these cases. And yeah. you, you cannot forget that. I, I think you're going to have cases where your client comes back and says, hey, you know, I'd like to change the link to the catalog or to the yeah. shopping or, you know, we only did 150 of the products that was in the store. There's another 50 products I'd like to, you know, so there, there's, there's a lot of matter text. The, the, the one tip I would, I would like to, to leave the community with is that there is a third party tool to check your matter tags to see if any of the links are broken. And so if you, I'm going to post that in the We Get Around Network forum al along with the recording of this show. So if you could imagine six months from now, those catalogs might have changed their link, the shopping link gets broken. And how do you go back and check all your links without clicking on 200 plus links? There's a tool, third party tool, and you just uh, put in your Matterport model number and within a matter of minutes it yeah. comes back with this laundry list of any problems or challenges with any of your links broken and as you know i didn't know about this until i showed the 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 tool for the first time and the first thing i did until you didn't mention it's free which is very important uh i use it straight away and i found a couple of mistakes that I had missed them because I had just changed it the night before and I forgot to do on the tour of the shop itself. I did on the tour, but not on the shop. And because of that, I was able to spot them straight away and change it. And I knew exactly what was wrong with them. So that is a great tip. And I really appreciate it for what you have to give me because I, until then I didn't even knew existed. And that's why the WGA and TV and forum exists. It's for giving us all this kind of information. And sometimes you get bombarded with hundreds or thousands of informations, but there is one that you needed and can make so much big difference in you. And as you said, that tool is just amazing and will save you for someone like me that has three tags in one tour, 300 tags in one tour. It makes the whole difference. I press a button, wait five, 10 minutes because it's 300 tags, don't forget. And then uh, I can see what's wrong, what's more or less right, or if everything is right. So yeah, that's a very good tip. It's and an awesome tool it's by a third party developer. I'll post the, the link to it in the We Get Around Network forum along with the recording of today's show. Um, uh, uh, Pedro, any parting words before we take off? Uh, no, just say thank you for all the team that was with me and thank you for having me. And uh, I hope that everybody can take something out of this. And if you need to contact me, as Dan already said, uh, you also can contact me on text, uh, my email, uh, textmedia at gmail.com. I also have that email, so if you need, it's uh, one that I always have active, so it's easy to get to me. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope that uh, you've taken something out of this. It's my first time doing one of those, so I'm really pleased. So thank you very much and uh, have a nice day or night, wherever awesome. you are. Uh, Pedro, thank you so much. We've been we've been visiting with Pedro Teixeira. Yeah. Uh, Pedro is the founder of Text Media PT. Uh, his website is text t e x t t e x. Excuse me, t e x m e d i a p is in Paul, t is in Tom. Textmediapt.com. And. Uh, for uh, for Pedro in uh, it, we uh, we actually need a little thumbnail here. Yep. Good. 
So for uh, for Pedro in Lisbon, Portugal, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN-TV live at 5.30.